Odds are, if you're watching these videos, you have a technology you want to move to market. Or maybe you're in school learning how to move technologies to market, or you work for an organization that moves technologies to market, and you're in the tech transfer office, or you're in a consulting firm. Who knows what? But anyways, your problem is you want to move a technology to market. Well, you can do all the market research in the world. You can contemplate what commercialization means all you want, but sooner or later, you've got to move it. And to move it, you need a strategy, unless you get really, really lucky and you can't count on luck. That's just the reality of it. So in this next set of discussions, we're going to focus on what strategy, how do you begin to get your arms around strategy, how do you think about it, so you don't get left out in the cold out there with the snow. The trick comes as no surprise is to remember that puzzle that we saw early on, the jigsaw puzzle. You've got the developer or the owner of the technology and their goals and you've got the technology which links in and you begin to understand that. Now you got another piece which is the market which links in. You've done your market research so you understand all of that. So now the question is how am I going to sell it to that end user that I've identified? The trick in doing strategy is to figure out how to sell it to the end user and then look at where you're weak and that tells you who you want to go to partner with and how you want to partner with them because ultimately nobody's going to be interested unless you can make money on it and to make money on it you got to sell it to the end user. So there's the key to this whole process, figuring out how do I get it to the end user. Now there are some problems and before we start let me just highlight some of these. Let's say you've done your market research and you've looked at what the price performance, ease of use the end users want, and you say, okay, I can meet that, but there's no oomph. No, but, you know, they're all like, well, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay, yeah, really. Okay, nice. Next, going to be hard to introduce that to the marketplace. That's just the reality of it. Best you can do is try and bundle it in with something or get onto somebody's train that's moving so you get pulled along. Because if everybody's like, well, yeah, okay, maybe, you know, unless you're interested in selling yourself onesie twosies, and you're just not going to see massive herds running over to buy it. That's particularly true if it's just an incremental innovation, so you can't even argue you're, well, I'm ahead of my time, later on they'll be interested. But let's say there is oomph, and they're like, wow, that's really cool, that's kind of interesting, we really would like to see more about that. Yeah, people really need that. That's, then you say, okay, cool, let's go. Go back to the other side. You do your market research and you say, oh my god, I don't meet the performance or the ease of use or the price requirements, and I don't have the stretch to get there. <clears throat> That's Mule of the Buzzer. I'm sorry, you're dead. You got to say, well, not everything's going to go to market, and this is one that's not, and you just accept that and you walk away. You may want to revisit it later on, put it on the shelf, pull it out if things change, but right now, there's no need for it. Otherwise, the only thing you can do is run around and see if there's a different application where it may fit. Let's look at another problem that might go, eh. um, look at the relationship of this technology to the dominant design. And you say, well, there is no relationship. It's a totally different way of doing the whole thing. And then you look and you say, well, what's going on in industry? Oh, my God, this dominant design is brand new. And people have just spent billions building factories and investing in all of this stuff to put this in place. And I'm telling them, throw that all away. Spend another set of billions to build new factories based on my technology. Not going to happen. Why? Because they don't have the money to do it. They have to recoup their investment before they can go forward and do something else. That was the case with the automobile industry uh, at the time of the first oil crisis, why the Japanese could come in. They had just invested in these factories to build massive big cars. Hmm. Where have I heard this before? Seems Americans never learn when it comes to cars. Anyways, they just built these factories to build massive big cars and um, then the oil crunch hit and they couldn't obsolete that whole factory because they were locked in until they could sell enough cars to get the money out and build new factories. That analysis, by the way, comes out of a book by uh, Abernathy and Utterbach called The Productivity Dilemma, which deals with the issues of the automobile uh, industry at the time of the first fuel crisis. So there's all sorts of reasons why technologies can be dead. Doesn't mean it's bad science or engineering, it just means the market's not interested at this time. And if you see that in your market research, 
you know, you can go back and look again, but sooner or later you got to accept it because you're not going to get around that problem. So in our discussion from now on, we're assuming that there is a need for the technology out there, that it meets end user needs, and that there is at least enough oomph that you have some reason to believe people will buy it. If you don't have that, stop, think about what you're doing, make sure you want to waste the money trying to get it into the market. Now you may be lucky, but the odds are against you. So I'll talk to you a little bit more in the next few sessions about how to get your arms around figuring out the strategy.